Welcome to Revolutionary Motion, where we show you tennis from a different perspective. We all have probably heard the word sweet spot, and lots of tennis players are striving to hit the ball in the sweet spot all the time. Now I'm going to explain to you why you shouldn't always aim to hit your balls in the sweet spot. So to do that, let's first identify what a sweet spot actually is. So if we're taking a look at the tennis racket, the sweet spot is a spot that's pretty much right in the center. And why is that spot called the sweet spot? Because right here, the uh, tennis racket will work as most as it can, or as much as it can, like a trampoline. So that means if you hit the ball right in this spot, you will have the most trampoline effect you can possibly get, meaning the racket will deform a lot, the ball will deform and stay inside the racket for a lot longer, so that means you have ideal power transfer and it feels very, very comfortable to hit the ball in that exact spot. Now, hearing all that, that sounds really good. So why on earth would I tell you not to hit the ball there every single time you try to do that? Very simple. The problem with the sweet spot is that there are spots on the racket that are a little bit further away from my hand and thus make our lever longer. So if, for example, I hit the ball right here, you can see there's a lot of space up to the top of the frame. So if I hit the ball here in comparison to hitting the ball here, you have a lot more leverage when you hit the ball a little bit higher up on the racket. So for shots like the serve, where if you're getting to a certain level, it's all about higher power output, obviously still with a lot of accuracy and precision, but you want to hit the ball harder, you should not aim to hit your balls right in the sweet spot, but make contact a little bit higher up on the racket, somewhere around here. Now, why exactly around here? If you're going higher up than that, obviously the leverage again gets longer, meaning you're hitting the ball further away from the engine, which is in this ca case your body, so that means you can create more force up there, but the flexibility of your strings diminishes very rapidly when you get too close to the frame. So what you need to find is a spot that gets closer to the frame or as close to the frame as possible without losing a lot of that flexibility that you find in the sweet spot of your racket. That's why you don't want to go too high up, let's say around here, because here there's too much tension up here on the strings, they can't deform enough, you won't transfer as much power into the ball, the trampoline effect is not as big, so it's not the optimal spot to hit your serves or your powerful forehands and backhands. Instead, you want to find a spot right between the sweet spot and up here, which is somewhere around up here. In this spot, you will traditionally find the most amount of power accessible to you. However, it's not going to feel as good as if you're hitting the ball in the sweet spot. Now that can show you that most of the time it's a bit harder to control the ball up there just because it doesn't feel as good. The contact point is not as long because the racket, the racket strings are not deforming as much. So that means that now you don't feel the contact point as good, you don't have as much control over your shot. Those differences are very small, but an experienced player will definitely feel them. So you have to learn to play with a contact point up here, above the sweet spot. And you should only use that spot on shots where power output is really the major concern for you. Like on the serve, or if you're trying to finish off a forehand or backhand where you need every bit of leverage that you can get in order to accelerate the ball a little bit more. Now one thing to keep in mind, and this is really important, you don't want to make, or you want to make sure that you don't hit the ball uh, away from the sweet spot towards the side frames. As soon as that happens, you will find that it feels a lot heavier on your racket because your racket gets pushed back to one of the directions. If it's at the bottom, it pushes back the bottom part. If it's at the top, it pushes back the top part. So that means you're losing a lot of that leverage simply because the power gets transferred always on this line of the grip, right? That's why the sweet spot is right in the center of the racket in all four directions, right? And the spot that we are aiming for when we get more power in our shots is also on this line that moves through the handle and straight through the center of the racket. So you gotta make sure that your contact point always stays on that line, ideally. 
And while you're keeping it on that line, you want to keep it a little bit higher up if you're trying to get a higher power output. So unless you're trying to get that higher power output, try to stick with the sweet spot for better feel and control. But if you need that higher power output, like on the serve or in finishing shots, you need to make sure that your contact point stays a little bit higher up on the racket just to make sure it's easier for you to access all the leverage that you have available to yourself. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys soon.